Hello and welcome back to another great tutorial from PH Studios. This is part of the XNA Basic Training Series. Last time we discussed more about sprites and how to use the origin, some complications that involve when using the origin, for example, the position will depend on the origin. As you saw in the last tutorial, when I said zero zero, it cut off the top half and the left half of the sprite, leaving just the bottom right corner to display. This tutorial will expand on that and cover movement. We'll add a vector for position and vector for velocity, and velocity will handle all the movement. Not only that, but here is what we will be creating at the end of the tutorial. So we have movement of the sprite, but not only that, it'll bounce off the sides of the window, making sure it will not leave the game window. And this is complete. You can go on the website on the far right side and click Excellent Basic Training Project Files. And you can download the projects there. Also, if you need the sprites go to the far right side of the main page click XNA CG2 Space Shooter and I added a just dedicated zip file just for sprites that way you don't get a full version a text tutorial and all the excess stuff if you just want the sprites and those sprites are free to use of course if you just take them and use them I won't like it but change them however you want and then use it on your own game if you want. As long as you give me credit, some credit, I'll be fine. Now, for the movement tutorial, we need to create a new project. XNA Game Studio 3.0 Windows Game 3.0 Let's call it Movement 1 Tutorial. Okay and that will create the basic game window and we have to actually do tutorial 4 over again last tutorial over again so we need a texture 2D sprite oh, I'll name that player just to fit the sprite name and a vector 2 for position Alright, so now we have an object that will get the sprite. So just like last time, we need to add our sprite image to our content in the Solution Explorer. And you can either drag and drop, it's on my desktop, so I can just drag and drop to here. Or you can just simply do right click add existing item. And for the 720p and lower version, it's outside of the window, but for the premium members, I recorded full screen so you can see it. Alright. So trust me about right click add, existing item is in there. You need to right click the content for it to be there. Alright, so just like last time, we need to load the content player is equal to content.load texture 2d parentheses quote player is the asset name end quote and parentheses semicolon and now in the draw method we need to do sprite batch dot begin sprite batch dot end and in between that we need a sprite batch dot draw and we pass it the player texture, the position, and a color dot white. And I press F5, see if we have any code errors, and it displays properly. So we are where we just left off. So now, at the very top, when we create a vector to position add a comma before the semicolon and add a velocity and in the initialize we need to initialize both of those position is equal to new vector 2 0 comma 0 and the velocity 
is equal to just some random values, but make them small, one comma two, for example. Oops. New vector two, one comma two. All right. Now the idea between motion in physics is you either have a simple way or a complicated way. The simple way is just update the velocity with acceleration and update the position with velocity. So the idea is acceleration will update velocity, then velocity will update position. Now the advanced way to do this is to actually use a function that will take the game time and manipulate the velocity and acceleration position that way. But we won't get into that until the later down in the tutorials. So just do the basic way. Now since we don't have acceleration, all we need is to do the position plus equals velocity inside the update method. And if you're not familiar with C sharp or you have not seen what that is before, this is essentially the same as position is equal to position plus velocity. Just shorthand for that. Alright, so now we press F5 and we have a smooth movement that as you will see it exits the game window. So now that we have a smooth movement we need to restrict that movement. To do so we need to create a new method to keep things simple that will check the bounds of the position and I just like to call it check bounds and the good thing about C sharp is in Visual Studio you can call a method before you create it and it will have a box underneath the C that you can hover and generate methods done we need a semicolon after that and that will automatically generate a check bounds method for you and it will actually add a return type for you but it'll just add the throw new not implemented exception always so just delete that now we need to check the bounds so if we go back to the movement one complete you'll notice that it bounces off the right side bottom left and top sides of the game window leaving it just inside of the game window so what this is essentially the easiest way to do this is to make sure that if the position is equal to greater than or equal to actually the left the right side of the game window we will just modify the velocity x to the opposite direction which means just multiply it by negative one and we do the same thing for the other sides so let me go more in detail about that so inside the check bounds method we need an if and we need to check the position is equal to or greater than or equal to now the bounds is very simple to get we just have a graphics device property that is derived from game and that graphics device has a viewport and that just holds our game window so viewport dot width that holds the right side of the game window and a position dot x is greater than or equal to graphics device dot viewport dot width or the right side of the game window let's set the velocity dot x times equals 